begin the current daf and the sechtes ba bekama daf mem dalad. We begin on the bottom of gimel mebeis, five lines up from the bottom of the yamid, where the gemara finishes off the previous mishnah, where we're speaking about the halacha when the ox gores a person, which replied to the halacha as a skila of the animal being stoned, which was bein tam bein mud, and we're going to the halacha of kaifer, which was specifically by the shor hamud. And then the Mishnah concluded, and the Gemara is going to explain the necessity of that teaching, and so it's regarding the son and daughter, that when it kills, kills Ketanim, it's going to have the same halacha as when it kills an adult. The rest of the world, some of the things we're going to discuss in today's daf are a shor shor meschachich bekaisel. If you have an ox that was uh, scratching himself on the wall, but not all of them, and, and the wall falls on the person that kills him, so he's going to be potter because kemisa sabayim kachmisa shor. We've mentioned this teaching before that the ox is treated like 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 the human owner, which is just like but the human owner has to be that he intended to kill. So it's over here. Now there's a question regarding chayim bekaifer. If the ox was a shor hamuid, which means to say he's done this already a few times. I used to discuss that, or does it have to be a few times? It's, it's like chain and regular where you're moved from the beginning. But the point is, does the owner pay kaifer to the victim's heirs or not? Because ultimately, Shamud, when he kills a person, pays kaifer. Would you say the same thing if it was like scratching itself against the wall and then the wall collapsed and killed the person? Would that also pay? On the Zakan Shlebekavana, the question of an ox injures a person unintentionally, does the owner pay for the damages if the ox did, did it Shlebekavana? The halach of Niskav and Harag Azeb Harag Azeb. The ox intended to kill one person, but instead killed another person, is ox chayv miso or not, which relates to the halach of Kemisa Bam Kach Misa Shar. The halach of Shar Hamidbar, Shar Hector, Shar Ager, Shar Misa, and Liyar. If you have an ownerless type of ox, their halach is of liability regarding the halach of Shar Hamazik. And the halach of Poita, your behudu, read this says you're exempt. Even if it was your ox when it gored. Then you makdish or nagach lebsevifke. You it was your ox, and then you mafkrit that even then it would be considered as exempt from the liability. To begin the current daf, we're finishing off the discussion from the previous mishnah from the bottom of Megimel Mabez, five lines up at the bottom of the Amid. The mishnah had spoken about the halachas of the shor hamazik regarding the halachas of skila and regarding kaifer. So the mishnah said that bechein beben oy bebas. The so too regarding the son or the daughter is going to have the same halachas of the shor hamazik. So tell me on the Brisa that elaborates on this teaching. It says in the Pasik in Shemais, Oy ben yigach, oy bas yigach, or if it gores the son, or if it gores the daughter. What is this Pasik teaching us? L'chayev ala ketanim, to be liable for minors, that the animal is going to be stoned to death for killing him, kigadaylam, just like we know the Torah tells you, is the Allah regarding when an ox kills an adult. Now the question the Brisa says is, wait a second, Dinhu. logic would tell us, that this should be, and I don't need to have a special pasik. Why? Because hoil v'chayiv, since is a liability of Misa. When you have adam be adam, when a person kills another person, there's a liability for death. And v'chayiv, there's also a chayiv Misa, of shor be adam, when an ox kills a person. So let's compare the two of them, says the Brisa. adam just like when there's a liability for, for a person killing a person. No, there's no difference between whether the victim is ketanim, is minors, the gedalim, or if they're adults. Like it says in the Turkey, Yaakov kol nefesh adam. When you kill any soul of a person, even if that sounds like even children. Oh, so av kishachayv shor ba'adam. So so to win this liability of an ox killing a person. Like tachli boy ben ketanim l'gedalim. There shouldn't be any difference between minors and adults. And void kabel chaymer, it's even a kabel chaymer. What's a kabel chaymer? Ma adam ma adam if when they kill a person kills a person. Shaloi also, but you didn't make when the murderer as a ketanim kigadolim, because the Pasuk says, Meikach of Dalet v'ish kiyaka. It's only when a man murders someone, not when a child murders. Yet still, Chayv Ba'al, you're going to be liable for when the victim is a ketanim kigadolim, is a child, is like an adult. Oh, says, G'nmar, Ketin, Sama, Mimdalim, and Alv, so Shor Ba'adam, when the ox kills a person, Sha'as, by ketanim, that you made, that the perpetrator, the ox, when it's a child that kills, you made it just like kigadolim, like an ox, that's an adult that kills because a shur ben yoyme is called a shur, like it says in Mikra Chabay, shur chesem ki yivalu. The moment the ox is born, he's called a shur already. And it speaks about the Torah shur. Oh, so ain't a din, then isn't it a kabochayim or shechayim that you should be liable for skila? Alakitam kigdailim, when it kills a minor just like an adult for a little baby, like a, like a, big, like a big adult. It's a kabochayim because we see this more, we, can, we make more kitam kigdailim by a shur than we make by other.
which the Brisa says, Loi, no, it's not a Kabbal Chaim, why? In Mamartib, you're going to say, Adam Ba'adam, that when a person kills a person, that if the victim's a baby, you're going to be liable just like an adult, because there's a liability by the damages of the person killing a person, Ba'advarm. When he injures a person, there's a liability of Ta, Ripo, and Shabbos, and Baishas. What are you going to say when the ox injures a person? is not liable for these four things. The ox is exempt. Well, it doesn't count Nezek because a shar is chayef for Nezek Shalom, but the other four, it's not. So maybe you would not learn out shar ba'adam from adam ba'adam. That's why you have to have a pasig that says oy ben yigach or bas yigach. That sounds like even little children because before it said the hamas isha isha. What does it say? This the chayev al-kitam gigdailim, which is the halach of our mission that the Bryce is bringing of this whole discussion to show why you need a pasig that you're liable for killing a child just as much as an adult. Now, Says the Bryce of Enli Elabimu Adin. I would only know that that's by Asher Hamud because this pasuk is in the heels of Asher Hamud. But Tami Nine, how do we know that it's even to be by Asher Tam? Dinu. Logic would dictate why. Just like we know there's a liability for an ox killing a man and a woman. And we just said that there's a liability in the Torah for a son and a daughter. Just like when there's a liability for killing a man and a woman. There's no difference regarding the halacha of skila. There's obviously a difference regarding kaifer, but there's no difference regarding the halacha of skila whether it's a short time or shemud. Okay, after shachai, but ben the bus like tachol ben tamamud. So so to win the liability for a son and a daughter for a child, there's also no difference between tamamud and by kavu chaymer. What's the kavu chaymer? Ma isra isha. If we find by a man the woman shekin hara koychem ben nizakin, there's a a weakness regarding the halacha of damages. Meaning because yes, you're liable when you injure the man and the woman. But when the man and the woman injures someone else, they have to pay. So it's like a, somewhat of a, of, a, of a weakness in the victim over there because the victim could also be liable. And still, like, you didn't make a difference if the shirt that's killing it is a tamo muid. Also, ben, a son, and a daughter. They have the upper hand when it comes to damages because a hair, a shaita, and a katan that we're discussing, the, their encounter is bad. Meaning, whoever injures them is liable. If they injure other people, they're exempt. So in a way, in the laws of damages, they have a stronger position than adults. Ah, so in addition, they talk about being tam lamud. So for sure, you shouldn't differentiate between tam lamud. That yes, of course, even the tam that injures them will be liable because an ish veisha that is a weaker hand in the zakin, there's going to be a liability of skila on the shor tam b'shor by cotton and the katana. So on that, Amr says the brayson. No, you're going to say it's not true because bechigidon and kal michamer. Do you think we could learn that something? That's less severe, meaning the tam, from something that's more stringent, meaning that if a muid, lahachmer love, to be stringent on the cow, to say, wait a second, just like the thing that's more stringent is liable, the thing that's less stringent is also going to be liable, because you're darshning tam from muid from a mamatzino, because you're telling me that, okay, there's, there's liability when the shar uh, kills a man and a woman, and there's liability by a son and a daughter, by a shar hamuid. Because the Chiva Ben Abbas is written in the context of a Mu'id. And you're saying, oh, just like the Chiva of Ishva Isha, you made Tom like Mu'id, so to by Ben Abbas, you're going to make Tom like Mu'id. But that comes out that you're really learning out Tom from Mu'id. Because if you didn't find the liability of Ben Abbas by Mu'id, you wanted to learn out Tom from Isha and Isha. Because Mu'id itself, if the Pasuk didn't include it, you wouldn't have known this at all. So if that's the case, in Hechmer, you're going to be stringent the Pasuk by Ben Abbas to be like a man and a woman, Ben Mu'id. That the Torah writes to you. Because Hachamer, meaning uh, that's by mood hachamer, that's more stringent regarding the Allah of Kaifer. So, do you think that Tachmer we're going to be stringent on our own logic with Tam Akal from Tam that's more lenient? In other words, how are you learning out Tam from Muid to tell me, oh, by Muid, you see that Ben Abbas has this liability of Skilo? So, so too, and because we learned that we, we could like look at Nishvish has the same thing, so too we should say the same thing regarding by the Ben Abbas by Tam. Where do you see that? That's, that's learning out from something more chamer. You can't say more chamer to what's more kal. And v'oid, moreover, is that the kavu chamer that, that, that you're darshning at the end is really flawed. Why? Because im amar to be ishvi isha, if you're going to say that by a man and a woman, that we're going to say tam is like a muad because you can't of the mitzvahs. Yes, an ox that kills them, whether he's a tam or is going to be stoned to death because a man and a woman that's being killed is a loss of someone that performs mitzvahs. What are you going to say by the son and daughter? They're exempt from mitzvah. Who said that we're going to treat the ox that kills them so stringently? So, 
They're going to be. But when we say that we don't, we don't create a liability of what's going to be, that's what we say. We say every time the chiv of the nezik should have to be when you kill a small ox, kills a small ox, you should say, okay, well, one day it's going to grow. Time of that's what it says in the Pasuk, or a son that's going to go, or a daughter that's going to go, which Rashi explains, it says the word yigach two times. Ben yigach, bas yigach, which including another negicha. To tell me that negicha betam, negicha bemuud, whether the goring is by a shartam, whether the goring is from a shartamuud, or negicha lemisa, negicha lenzaka, whether it's goring for death, whether it's goring for, for, for damages, that it's always going to be a liability, and therefore there's no difference by a son and a daughter than a ish for isha, there's going to be the same liability, whether tam or mood, and that's the source for this Allah. Now, look at the next Mishnah, continuing this theme regarding the Shah Mazik. So, Shar Shoy Mishachich Bekaisel. He had an ox that was uh, rubbing himself against the wall. But not for Allah Adam. And then there's a person on the other side doing some planting, and it, it falls on the person. And it kills him. Or let's say, a, a similar idea. The idea of this is basically he's not intending to kill the person. Let's say this ox was charging towards this animal. Instead, he slipped in the mud, whatever it is, and he ended up killing a person. Or the Canaan, he intended to kill a non Jew, he killed a Jew. On the fall, he intended to kill a, a, a fetus that was a non viable child that wasn't going to live through the mum, and instead he killed a viable, healthy child. So, all these cases, Potter, the owner of the ox, is going to be. Exempt. Now, right. So the child was, what are you put it from? We put it from Kaifa, put it from from Skila. Oh, this was that Mishnah that we were quoting. This was exactly we quoted this. So now the Gemara says Amachlekes, which we just mentioned in reference just a second. Amar Shmuel says Potter Mimisa. What does it mean in the Mishnah that you Potter? So he says. The ox is exempt from being stoned to death. Why? Because the ox did not intend to kill. The Gemara tells us in Ahmed Bez, Kamisa Sabailam, just like the owner of the ox, how would he be executed if he killed? That's how the death of the ox is going to be killed. Now, if a person did not intend to kill a person, he does not get executed. But, however, the owner of the ox will be liable for the atonement money. If his shar is a shar hamuid, so because it's could have said in the Pasuk Kaifer, it says im Kaifer, which we brought this on on Daf Mem Gimel in the previous Daf, to, to include that even if we're Shalai Bekavana, that you can be Chai for Kaifer. That's how Shmuel says. Rabbah he says, no, Pata Bezemazeh. You can be exempt from both, which is like the way Rabbah had said on Mem Gimel and Aleph, because it says, Hashar Yisach of Agamba Alab Yumas, which tells us the ox is. is is, is, is the ox going to be stoned to death? Then the owner pays kaifer. But if the, if the ox is not being stoned to death, which he's not, because he didn't do it deliberately, well, then the owner doesn't pay kaifer. That was a machlik, as you mentioned, the previous stuff. And that's a machlik, Rabbi and Shmuel, how to explain the, the, this Mishnah. But I'm not thinking more as on Shmuel. Wait, Vamai, why are you chayiv kaifer hatamhu? Meaning, as Rashi explained simply, that even according to one that says, im kaifer, the extra word im comes to include even shleba kavana, that's only a mush shleba kavana. But this animal is a tam. With rubbing against the wall, which the Gemara says, no, it's not. Rav, like Rav says, which that's brought later on in Perak Shosh Nagi Chesapara, the next Perak of Daphne Ches Amabez, that uh, the ox is, is a muid to fall on people in pits, which places brings the, the, the discussion which the Gemara talks about over there, which it has vegetation over there. And every time the animal keeps on trying to eat it and fall, ends up falling into the pit, all the workers there in the mine end up getting killed by him. So, here also, it could be b'muid l'schachah b'nei adam b'salam, which means that this ox always rubs himself against the wall because he has got that seven-year itch, and then he ends up causing it to fall on the, on the people behind. So he is a muid. So what do you mean? So then, what are you talking about? Why are you saying that he's putter from, from Misa? He should, be, he should be executed because bishlam ahasam, you understand, with their meaning, what we'll see in the next parak by a shard that falls on a person. In a pit, you could answer, like the Gemara says over there, that the reason why we didn't kill him the first times he gored was because <laughs> the Chazi Yeruka Benafal. What happened was, just that he f- would, would be a mood to fall in pits and kill people, was because so he saw the vegetation and he, he fell unintentionally on this person that he saw some vegetation in, in the opening of the pit. And he comes to eat and he falls in. So he, he's not going to kill him because he wasn't intending to kill. So even though he's a mood for it, so, that, so you could have the, 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 the halacha of becoming a muid, 
but he's not going to be executed. But al over here, what type of shloim miskaven would you have over here? Michael, remember, what are you going to, since you're telling me he's a mood for this, so, so, so Michael, remember, what are you going to say? How can you say shloim miskaven? So the says, no, hachanami, also that we see, we see that when he keeps on rubbing against the walls, I'm not because he's trying to kill the people on the other side. We see he just, he's got that itch, and, and, and it's not to make it fall on the people. So the Gemara says that people have asked this many times, from where do we know? How do we know the, the, the animal psychology about why is he rubbing himself against the wall? Forensics uh, have to try to figure out why is he doing this, right? So the Gemara says very simple, the boss of Nafa, after falls, he's still rolling around in it. So that, that would seem to indicate uh, the, the, the post-mortem over here is like, we see he's, he's still so rubbing. He, he did it, he didn't do it to kill the person. And therefore, that's why um, he's, uh, he's, he, he, he's not being killed. Because, and that's why he's going to be part of Amisa, but he can still be Chayab Kaifu because he can still be a Shahamud. So the Gemara to the Bay says, but wait a second, Allah still doesn't make sense because Vakati Tsroiris Ninu. The Gemara asks on Shmuel that this animal that causes the walls to fall down, Kaifer is only by Nagicha, by Goring, which is because it's the animal itself. Here, it's not the animal itself, it's, it's Tsroiris. Tsroiris is the animal's walking, it shoots forth Kaichai. Pebbles. Here also the wall, cause the wall to fall. That's kaifer. That's tsrayr. So, so how are you saying that there's even a lach of kaifer at all? So Amar Abari Bereder of Kamli says we told him the ka'azel that the wall was going mine mine from him from him. Meaning by pushing it and rolling it at, at all times until it falls on the person. That was that's considered gufay of the animal. If it's wearing a jacket, it's not kaifer. It's it, it, it's like wearing the wall. It's pushing the wall onto the person. And, um, and, but, but however, he did not intend to kill the person. The reason we part from Skila. But however, that's why the owner of the animal will be chayev for Kaifer. Now it says the Gemara, Tani Kav Zayde Shmuel, but you have to Rav. You have a Bryce that says like Shmuel, which was, and, and not like Rav, which, which we said that you can be part of a Misa, but you will be chayev and Kaifer, not like Rav who said that you can be part from both Misa and Kaifer. What is the Bryce? So the Bryce says actually four categories. Yesh chayev and Misa Kaifer. There are cases where the ox is going to be liable for death, and the owner is going to be kaifer. Yes, chayba kaifer, but you already know where this is going when there's four, like if you know basic uh, categorization. Yes, chayba kaifer, but there's a liability of kaifer, but you'll be, the end will be part of him being killed. Yes, chayba misa, but my kaifer, that there are cases where the end will be liable for death, but the owner will be part of him kaifer. Yes, part of him is that, and are those who are exempt from both. So basically, it's all four of the variables. So, how So, how so? So it says the Bryce, the case number one is Muid Bikavana. Now, the reason why that's very important is because Muid is the principle of Kaifer, and Bikavana is the liability of Chayv Misa. So, says the Bryce, that's case number one of Chayv Misa Bikaifer. has both variables of Chayv Misa and of Kaifer. Case number two. And this, 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 this is the one that we want to support Shmuel. Muid, if it was a Shaham Muid, Shaloi b'kavana, but it never intended to kill the person. Chayiv b'kaifer, that's the point that's like Shmuel. He's going to be, the owner is going to be chayiv for kaifer. Upata b'misa is going to be exempt from being killed because we had said that it says im kaifer, could have said kaifer, which that's like Shmuel, who we had this teaching in the previous staff also, that to say, which is not like Rab, who says that you not only put for misa, he also part from Kaifer because it compares, it says in the Pasig, Bagam Baal of Yumas is only when it's going to be that Hashar Yisachal. Okay, case number three. Tam B'Kavana. If let's say it was a short Tam, that deliberately killed the person. Okay, Chai B'Misa part of Kaifer. So there's a liability of killing the, the, the ox because it killed the person, which even by Shur Tam, but you part from Kaifer because Kaifer is only by Muit. And the fourth case, Tam Shle B'Kavana. It was the first time, let's say, the ox was doing it and it did not intend the animal does not get killed, and of course the owner does not pay kaifer. Now, the hamizakin regarding if the ox damages shaloi bikavana without intent, and it didn't kill the person, it just injured. Yudah says the owner of the ox is going to be liable. But Pshim 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 says the owner of the ox is going to be, going to be exempt. It says my time to be what's the reason Yudah that that the owner of the animal is going to be chayiv because it says yolf mikaifer. Let, let's learn out from the liability of kaifer. Ma kaifer, just like his kaifer, shalai be kavana chayiv, even when he doesn't unintentionally. 
like we said from the Rebbe, or like we just said from Shmuel from the Brisa, that it says im kaifer. The word im is extra word coming to include even when you do shlebe kavana. The owner of the animal is michayv kaifer. Afan is So to damages when you don't kill the person, the shlebe kavana chayv. Also when it's unintentional, the owner of the ox is going to be chayv. Which people had mentioned in the past. What happens if the animal done it in unintentionally? This is the machlekes over here. If you chayv. Rabbi Shimon Yalov mikutali the shor. No, Rabbi Shimon learns out who he says the owner of the ox is going to be exempt. He learns out from when do you, when you execute the ox. Ma katle, when, just like when you execute the ox, shall I become on the potter? He did it unintentionally. No, you're not going to, he's off the hook. Afnizaki, shall I become on the potter? So too, regarding his damages when he did it unintentionally, he's going to be off the hook. So the Gemara asks on each one, Rabbi Huda, Nami Nelif Mekatali, why doesn't Rabbi Huda learn out that from when you execute the ox, just like there he's potter, if he did a shall I become on the sotu by Nizaki? And he says, no. Done in Tashlum, Mitashlumen. We learn out the payment from the payment. There's Akin is regarding the payment of the damages of the person. From Kaifa, which is also the payment of the damages. They ain't done the Tashlumen Mimi, so we're not going to learn out the payment from the death of this of the animal. What does the death of the animal have to do with Tashlumen? And therefore it's more comparable to learn it out from Kaifa, and therefore he holds that you're going to be potter when there's Shlebi Kabana. So it's like more said, okay, Rabbi Shimon, so also Rabbi Shimon, also, why doesn't he learn that from Kaifa to say that you're going to be Chayev? Why is he learning this out from the Katali to say you're going to be potter? The Gemara says, the done the Yubi Dishar. He'd rather learn out the liability of the ox, meaning the payment of, of the damages are because of the ox, Michayubi Dishar, from the liability of the ox, which is his execution of his own body. Lafuka Kaifer, that excludes Kaifer, the Chayubi the Bible, but that really has nothing to do with the ox, meaning, as Rashi explains, it's the Kapara of the Nefesh of the owner. It's not regarding what the ox did per se. Yeah, he's, he's a grama maybe for that. And therefore, that's why he learns out rather from the, um, from the Ketali the Shar. And that's their machlek is regarding if the Shar, if, if the owner of the ox is going to be liable when the ox did it, Shalai Bekavan. Now, the Mishnah continued and said, Niskavan lahargas a behema, lahargas a adam a So he said, if the ox intended to kill an animal, and by mistake, there was a person nearby and he killed the, the person, so he's going to be potter. The Gemara makes the following diuk. The inference is, okay, let's say you intended to kill one person. And instead of kill another person, sounds like you'd be liable. It's only because you intended to kill an animal to kill the person. But unless you kill, then you kill one person to kill another person, you'd be chayib. Says the Gemara, must need like Rabbi Our mission is not like Rabbi Shimon. Why? Well, Ketan learned the Bryce. Shimon, let me, he says, Shimon says, even if you intend to kill one person, you kill another person, you're going to be potter. My time to Rabbi Shimon, what's the reason Rabbi Shimon? Because the Amakra, the Pasuk says in Shemais, it says, Hashar Yisaka Begambal of Yumas. It says, the ox is going to be stoned, and then the owner is going to die, which really ends up meaning Kaifer, but, but we're comparing the Pasuk, Kamisa's Bible, Kachmes Hashar. Just like is the death of the owner, that's how you execute the ox. Meaning, Ma'abam, just like the owner is Adam Chaban Lei, is only going to be liable if he intended, which Rashi brings, Reb Shimon holds this Svara by a human murderer in the Gemara and Sanhedrin of Ayin Testament Aleph, that you're only liable if you intended for that person. Ah, oh, so to the ox is also only when he intended for that person, which the Rabbanon actually disagree over there. And they say that no, even the owner also, if he intended to kill one person, he killed another person, he actually would be chayev. But Rabbi Shimon Lashitasai holds that the Mises Abayim is only until you intend to kill this one. Yes, he's not like our mission because he would hold that this halach of Niskavan Hargazah, Hargazah, even that would be part of not just Niskavan Hargazah Behemoth. So that's what the Gemara actually clarifies and said, the Ba'am Gufayim and Olam. According to Rabbi Shimon, how do you know this halacha of the owner himself that if he intended to kill one person, he killed another person, he's actually going to be potter? Because the Amar is in the bar. It talks about over there when the person is uh, killing someone. It said, V'aravloi, if he was laying in ambush, become a love, and he got on him, that's he's going to be chai for having killed that other person. Now, which means, actually, is Kabaloi, until he intended for him. But if he didn't intend for him, even if he intended for someone else, he's going to be potter. Okay, but Rabbanu, who they disagree, they hold that if you intended to kill one person, you kill another person, you're actually going to be chayev. So high or of loy, this that you lied in ambush for this person, my Adelaide, what do they do with They do with it. It can't be that you have to have intended to kill this person. Because even intended to kill... What else? Why not? Oh, yeah, so... Um... Yeah, if that's a good question, how do you have a sra? Places discuss this somewhere, similar similar type of a question. Now, a different master, how they palga palga, he discusses stuff like that. That do you know for sure what he's going to end up doing? 
Hashem is Dalit Hashem. It's Varim. It's Dalit Hashem. It can't be either. It's not even. It's Tzai Vayim and Sifra. Tell us what to do. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the Pasuk when it talks about, um, this, this is a Pasuk, actually, this Pasuk is actually talking about Golas. Actually, it's talking about, no, it's actually talking about, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, why can't I mean it depends what they warned him. You're killing a person. Let's say tell you're killing a person. Why can't it be Khiv Misa? Why can't they say you're killing a person? Right, right, that's what tell right. Tell you. Right. The question is you have to have an intent for this person or any person. So 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 the question is, but what do they do with Va'arav Lai? Well, what are you excluding from there if you hold it doesn't have to be light? So I'm going to do And this actually is a more complicated. This is where actually discusses your question on more in these cases. Because Prat um, Lazarek, as we'll see in a second, not this case per se, Prat Lazarek Eben Lagai, which means to say, or Lagav, however you say it, meaning that um, you, you, you went and you took a, a, a stone and you threw it in a group of people. Now, there's Jews and non-Jews over there. You could say he intended for the non-Jews. So over there is where you're going to be part of. When, you, when, you're try, when you're trying to kill one Jew and you kill another Jew, yeah, you're going to be high. Of course, you're killing a person. Who cares that person? That person, the rabbi on the hold. But when you throw a stone into a group of people, Jews and non-Jews, some rally, and you're just throwing your rocks, right? So then, oh, so then you're going to be part of it. Wait a second. What's the case talking about? If there's nine non-Jews and there's one Jew, well, typically, then it should be enough with Dalak of the Rubik Kanan that most are non-Jewish, and, and, and therefore what? So, so therefore, I don't need a Pasuk to say you're going to be Pasuk because we go after the laws of majority. And, 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 and therefore, you're going to be Pasuk because of right. Well, you're not going to be Even if it's 50-50, let's say there's five Jews and five non-Jews. So you don't need a Pasuk to say you're going to be Pasuk because the Torah tells you, when it's a doubt, it's a 50-50, we go leniently. So of course I would know that you wouldn't be liable. So says There's nine Jews and one non-Jew. That is the Afagav that even though, if not for the Pasi, I would have said the Ruby Israel, the majority are Jews, and you should go after the majority, and that he intended to kill a Jew. Now remember, even though maybe he didn't intend to kill this person, but but the Chacham hold if you intend to kill one person, you kill another person, you can be So if there's nine Jews, the majority is telling us you intended to kill a Jew. And therefore, then you should be chayiv. Oh, so that's what we're telling you that even the kechad the kanani benayi. But since there's one non-Jew there, hamalei kavua. This was a group that was standing in one place at this rally, and they were stationary. The halacha is v'chal kavu. Whatever stationary kemech samech to them is like fifty-fifty. And then now you're back to b'savik nevashes lahakil, and actually says Rashi, wherever we mention halacha that whatever's kavua stationary kemech samech is actually learned from this pasuk. The Chacham that say, that it has to be that you're in, laying in ambush for this person, then you're chayef for the Miso. What's that excluding? Not excluding when you tend to one guy killed another guy. That you talk would be chayef. But when you threw into a group of people, nine non Jews and one Jew, I mean, not nine Jews and one non Jew, that even though the majority should tell us, we don't consider that as a majority. That's what the Pasuk's teaching us. We can say like 50 50 because it's Kabuah, it's like Mesa and Mesa. And then you can do something much local, and therefore, um, and that's that's what you were saying about. So that's what tasted the mess of Paga Paga. He says, So without the halach of Safik Nevash you should let him off because what do you mean? It's not, there's no hasra. And even if you hold, uh, 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 he says, in, in, in the, according to one the whole, so how do you let him off the hook from that reason? If it comes out that he killed the Jew. But so, in other words, Taisa wants to figure this out. So he says that it's different over there that you know for sure that's going to come to an Isser. And 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 but here by Gazari Yam Legab, you don't know it's gonna come to Issa Bashur, you don't know who he's gonna kill. So uh, but that's what Taisa is trying to figure out exactly um what what is the what is the Hasra, but it sounds like that yeah, you would warn the guy that you're gonna kill a person upon him. So that would be the that would be the Allah according to the Chacham. Now we can tell Allah the next Mishnah of continuing the theme 
of this, this, the skila of the shur, of when the ox gores and kills a person, that you stone them to death. So now the mission describes different types of shvara. Shara isha, the ox of a woman, or b'shara yisaimim, or the ox owned by orphans, that they don't have a caretaker, or shara patrapas, or the ox of a caretaker of the orphans, it's just that it's now on the caretakers to safeguard, or shara midbar, an ox that's just roaming the desert, or shara hektish, an ox owned by hektish, or shara gershem esvein lo yershem, or you have an ox of a convert that died and he has no inheritance, which is essentially hefker. Harelech hayav misa, all these oxen, if they kill a person, are going to be liable to be killed. Behudem, he says, Shara midbar, the ox of the desert, Shara hektish, Shara owned by hektish, Shara gershem esvein, and the ox of a, of a ger that died. Peturim and the misa, they're actually exempt. If they kill a person, we don't execute them. If you say, because they don't have any owners. So the Braisa explains, turn up on. Shar Shar Shiva. That is, there's seven. No, these are actually, but these we're saying are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These, yeah. So this is coming to include something. What we're, um, the, the, the Braisa says that it says the word Shar. Seven times in the parasha when it gores a person. Why, why does it say seven times? It's lahavi coming to include, which Taisa says that one is for the parasha itself. But then you have six extra shvarim to include. Shari Isha, the ox of a woman, meaning don't say, because the Torah says bal hashar, which is a, a masculine terminology that uh, you would think to say that it would apply specifically, which Taisa says a little differently because it always says masculine. But you would think maybe it's only by ox of a man, therefore it comes to include uh, the ox of a woman. Shahar Yusayimim, the ox of orphan, Shahar Batrabis, the ox of Kirtaka, Shahar Midba, the ox of the desert, Shahar Hekdash, Shahar Hekdash, Shahar Hekdash, Shahar Hekdash, Shahar Hekdash, Shahar Hekdash, the ox of a, of a convert that, that died and does not have any inheritance, which these are not Shahar Ish, these are all different cases, and that we had to include them all. Yudami, he says, however, that actually three are exempt. He says, Shahar Midba, Shahar Hekdash, 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 Because if he had, if the Ger had children after he had converted, so then they would be Yarshan, then they would have Allah of a regular Shar. It wouldn't be a, wouldn't, a Ger that dies and no Yarshan, yeah, would have Bailam. The idea of a Ger that has no Yarshan is that it's Hefker essentially. Whoever wants to grab it could grab it. If, if this Ger, if he converted when he was 15 and now he has a regular family, his children are regular Yarshan. So they would have Bailam, would be a regular Shar. It's only if he converted when he was... Right, right, exactly. And, 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 and these three are are because they don't have owners. So, Amr Rav Huna, he says, Huda says a, a, a big chiddush. It says that this that he said that you're going to be potter is ulub It's not only if it was originally hectish. Even if the animal gored and then, before the Gemara din, the owner went and was makdish. Or nagach ulubseifikdish. It'd be gored, and then subsequently he, he made a hefker. Even there, the ox is gonna, not going to be stoned to death. Mimai, where do you know this from? Because me Tani, from the fact that I mentioned a taught Tarti, meaning Rav Huna, is a Moira, he's being medayik, the Behuda said his halacha, even if it wasn't always like that, it was even after a gourd. How does he know that? Because it says two cases of Shur Hefker in our Mishnah. What's the two cases? You have Shur Hamid, but you have the ox of the desert, and you have Shur Hagir Shemes Ben you have the ox of a convert that died and has no inheritance. Because Shara Geshem is my knee. What is the case of an ox of a, of a convert that died? What is that? Well, the Kivan Elo since there's no inheritors, how about Leshar Hefka? That is an ownerless ox. Well, Hainu Shar Hamid, but that is the ox of the desert. Hainu Shar Geshem is my That's the case of the ox that, of the, of the convert that died, has no inheritors. Ah, Lavo Kamashalan. Rather, what is the Mishnah teaching us by repeating the Shar of the Ger, according to Behuda, to tell us? The fill nagach that even if the ox gored when the convert was alive, ulu b'sayv hikdish and then he was makdish or nagach ulu b'sayv or the gored and then at the end he died, which is hefker. The potter is gonna be potish mamina that we're teaching you both that even if it was not originally hektish, but even if subsequently hektish, even that would make a patur. And Tanamach is similar in the brayse that the brayse says this idea of Ravuna. Yes, I can remember who did more than this. Not only did he hold that these cases can be potter, but I feel a nugget of the There's even if Gordon and then it was Mac, there's a nugget of the same Gordon and then it was Mac, there's a And the source is like this. It says in the Pasik, Bahuad Biba Alav, 
it says that you're going to testify regarding the owners, which is in court, because testimony is only in court, Vehame is and you're going to kill the ox, etc., which teaches us Achte Misa Bahamad Bedin until the death of the animal and the court case will be Shav and are going to be the same as one, meaning that there are Ba'alav, that there are owners. If there's no owner, then you're not going to kill the animal, even if that's by the court, because that's when the who it happens, which in the court, even though it had an owner before him. Says the Gemara, wait a second, only Hamad Abedin? Hamad Abedin means the actual start in the court case. The Gemara didn't lay but you don't have to have that. The verdict also has to be that there's an owner. Bahashar Yisakal, but the ox being stoned, which is mentioned in the Pasig, Gemara Dinu, is the verdict, is the final passing of the judgment, which is also written in the Pasig. That also has to be that there's a Bailam still there. So as my Elim rather say, you're right. Ashtay Misa, Bahamad Abedin, but Gemara Din, Shabakiach has to be all the same to say that you have an owner in all three of the stage. And Debra Behuda said you can be Potter, even if Nagach Lebesay Fivka, Nagach Lebesay Fivka, saying to any time, Jose.